Hello, and welcome to this presentation on Tessin Memory Bist. It is now available in Tessin Shell. We're calling this the Next Generation Implementation Flow. My name is Bruce Swanson, and I am a technical marketing engineer at Mentor Graphics. First of all, you might be wondering, why have a new flow? Well, Tessin Memory Bist and Tessin Shell provides a very flexible and simple flow. You can now work within Tessin Shell along with the other Mentor products. So you have these tools available under this one powerful platform. The tool usage is easily adaptable to fit into your design flow and provides an automation capabilities with tickle and introspection. A variety of users will benefit from this new Tessin Shell flow. So those coming from Logic Vision Flow, this has the same great capabilities of that tool, but it now makes it much easier because the flow is easier to implement and is more flexible. Other users will benefit as well. Those coming from MBIST Architect or other memory based solutions will find that this is now a flexible flow that is easy to use and it is industry proven solution. There are many benefits to moving Tessit Memory Bist into the Tessin Shell platform. Those include that now this tool can work with all the other tools that we provide in one environment. It allows you to switch between the different operations that you need to do doing your DFT work and it's quick and seamless all within this one platform. This is a very powerful shell environment. It provides a full tickle interpreter. It also offers design and pattern data introspection and editing. And the user can actually create their own shell commands by matching the DFT's methodologies that they need. And all of the data in the file management is done automatically. So all information is stored in one place. So for instance, it's easy to pick up today where you left off yesterday. All the great memory bus capabilities from the logic vision flow are maintained. So you get all of the key features as you've always had. You get the hard algorithm programmability, the fully automated self-repair, support for ARM shared bus, automated interactive diagnosis, and all the leading IP providers of memories are supporting our platforms. Here's an overview of the main flow steps. You start off by loading your design files. Then you specify your requirements. So that is what you want to create. In this case, if you're creating memory bits, you specify how many controllers. For instance, do you want to add boundary scan? Do you want to have uh, visor control? That type of thing. That creates a DFT specification, which is then processed. And that does design rule checking as well. Once that's done, we create an IJ tag network automatically by extracting the echo file. And then the design is finished. From there, you can go on and create your simulation test benches and your test patterns, and then run those simulations to make sure that everything works as expected. To illustrate how easy it is to use this new flow within Test and Shell, I will step through an example here for a small block in one design. On the left, I have a Linux shell in which I will invoke Test and Shell. And on the right, I have the sequence of steps in a do file that I will copy and paste into the, the uh, window, session window on the left so that I don't have as many typos. So the very first thing we want to do is set the design context. What this does is it tells the tool what we want to do. In this case, we want to create some DFT logic in the RTL level. Once the context is set, I then load the design files, including the library. I set the current design block. In this case, it's block B, which is a sub-block of the design so I set the appropriate design level. Next, I will set the DFT specification requirements. In this case, I'm turning memory tests on because I want to add memory bus controllers. If I do a help on that command, you can see that there are many other options that are available, such as adding boundary scan as well. This particular design, this block, only has one clock, so I will define that clock and then we're ready, ready to run rules checking. Those come out just fine. So now we will create the basic DFT specification. So the DFT specification is a ASCII file, basically. And what it shows, if I report on it, is this kind of a structure. So at the very top, we have the DFT specification for block B, and it's done at the RTL level. 
Within that specification, we have different wrappers. The top one is our IJTAG network wrapper, so that describes the IJTAG network for this piece. The second wrapper is the memory BIST, and in this particular example, it only has one new controller that's being added for instance MEMA. And MEMA happens to be a repairable memory, so the tool figures this out and automatically adds a memory visor wrapper as well. If you're like me and like to see things kind of uh, graphically or visually, we can also bring up the DFT specification within our DFT visualizer tool. And here's what that looks like. So just like we saw in the, the text on the screen, we have the structure laid out in this window on the left. And you can expand or contract any of those levels of the different wrappers and the contents. If you select on any of these items on the left, you will see options on the right hand side. Let me just click on the controller here as an example and you can see we can expand these out. All the values that show up in in the gray text means that those are the default values. But if you want to change any of these, it's very simple. By clicking on this little pull down option on the right, you can select different values. If you select a different value, then the text goes to black. If you wanted to actually make those changes, you could hit the apply button down here at the bottom. But for this case, I just want to go with the default, so I will cancel that out and we'll proceed. So once the specification is how we like it, we then process the DFT specification. This starts with the validation process. So you can see it validated the IJTAG network, the memory BIST, the memory visor, did some more processing, generating the actual logic that's needed for the controller and the visor. And then it actually inserts it into a copy of the design. Writes those files out, and it's all complete. The next step is to extract the IJTAG network and create an echo file for the top level of this block. Now that the design is completed, we can actually create a pattern specification. And in this, we will, we will specify what it is that we want to create for simulation test benches. Then we will process that pattern specification. And when, when that is complete, we will actually, uh, in this case, fire up model sim and run the actual simulation of those test benches. And we have a system in place here where you can actually see a real-time view of how those simulations are progressing. So you can see now that there is one test running and two are queued. Now the first one has passed. The second one is passed and the third one is running. And now they've all completed and all of them passed. So that was our quick overview and demo of the new next generation memory boost flow within Test and Shell. If you have any questions, please contact your local Mentor Graphics representative. Thanks for your time and attention.